Now, this version of the Tick is wildly different from other versions, fantastically wildly different. But did you have discussions about where you wanted to have things, like a line drawn where we didn't want to repeat things? It, it, it always sort of starts with Ben meeting with the writers' room and just everybody pitching in what they think of the first season and where they hope it will go. And then, you know, Ben will then sort of have a group of things he wants to do. He, some things he wants to do that have to do with his own personal feelings about stuff, humor, things he thinks are, you know, uh, uh, contemporarily interesting to him, and also character growth. So they just sit in that room for two months just talking it all through and breaking out the characters. And I'm really fortunate because I just get to jump in and give them feedback occasionally, you know. <laughs> but honestly, I don't have to do any of the invention. But Ben really comes to that room with a lot of really interesting thoughts about where it should go. The Tick always sort of takes its stuff from the fabric of its times. I kind of started to realize that, so, and whatever medium it's in. The stuff of now, Netflix, Marvel, um, all the superhero shows, all the superhero movies, they are all very much uh, interpreting a higher degree of uh, reality. Um, they have been around so long that like, you can almost, oh, it's a superhero show, but it's really about his law work. <laughs> or what I mean, like that's what we're getting now, right? So, um, those choices were made by a zeitgeist, and it was just trying to like tune the math and do it a uh, proper reflection. And I think we did okay, you know. Um, but it was really like that meant making Arthur more real. That meant making uh, uh, the reality of this thing. I thought uh, the only thing left to do was take it deeply seriously and still let it be humorous. Take cover. <gasps> I am so sorry, Rebecca S. Baumer, beloved wife and Mo.